Hello everybody, my name is Dave Butler and I would like to welcome you to the latest installment in the All Data Community webinar series. Today we have the privilege of talking to you about the power of ask. Today's presenters are myself, my name is Dave Butler and I'm the product manager for All Data Community. My co-presenter for today is Rich Deagle. Rich is the manager of the Tech Assist line, and Rich also manages the team that provides a lot of the expert answers to your questions. Hey Dave, thanks for, uh, for the introduction, and uh, good morning everyone. You know, today I'd like to talk about what I like to call the power of ask. And I know it sounds a little corny, and you know, how much we all like asking for help or advice, you know, or directions, right? But you know, when it comes to getting a vehicle diagnosed and repaired quickly, asking the right questions at the right time can be a real game changer. So, like, what got me thinking about this concept was a conversation I've had, like, with numerous shops across the country, and what a lot of them tell me is that their tech productivity is typically above average, you know, except when it comes to diagnostic jobs. And they have the latest test equipment, they got plenty of diagnostic information, they got well-trained techs, and they ask me, it's like, well, what are we missing? And I'll tell you what I tell them. You know, you have to go back to the basic rule of diagnostics, and that is you got to ask the right questions. You know, just like a detective asks questions to solve a case, good diagnostic techs have to ask questions throughout the entire diagnostic process. You know, and the service writer also has to ask questions of the customers out there in the service drive. So, you know, guys, I got to tell you, you know, asking the right questions can save you time, and it can quickly turn those tough diagnostic problems into successful repairs. So, you know, let's start on the service drive where the diagnostic pro uh, process begins. Um, the information that service advisor gathers on the, on the service drive is vital. You know, not only does it provide uh, clues to help narrow down the possible causes of the problem, it also helps the techs formulate a really good diagnostic strategy. And one of the most valuable tools a service advisor can use is a symptom-related checklist. And, you know, a good checklist is going to be a guide to help that service advisor ask all the right questions. For example, if you've got a hard start problem, right, the tech's going to need to know, um, is it first thing in the morning? Is it after a hot soak? And does it start and die numerous times? Um, you know, all these are, are good clues to help point that tech in the right direction. And, you know, you, know, you can create those checklists yourself, but even better, uh, use the inspection checklist that are already located in all data's repair and collision products, and they're located right there under shop operations. Now, uh, let's see, let's talk about one of the challenges techs face all the time. Guys, you know what I'm talking about. These intermittent problems are problems that you can't duplicate. You know, in these cases, it's really important to duplicate the exact conditions that cause the problem to occur in the first place. So, in other words, you know, if the engine misfires only between 25 and 35 miles an hour under a load, you're not going to want to drive it at cruise on the freeway at 65 or 70, right? I mean, it seems like really simple advice, but as a detail, a lot of techs often overlook. Uh, also, I found it very beneficial to ask the owner to come down and test drive the vehicle with you. Ask them to drive it like they normally do, or, or especially like they do when the problem's occurring. Because a customer's driving habits it could be a lot different than yours, and they may be, may be able to get that problem to occur a lot more consistently. And here's how it's going to benefit you. If the problem occurs, now you know exactly how to test drive the vehicle to do the problem. If the problem doesn't occur, well, at least the owner, you know, he really believes that you couldn't du duplicate the problem. And I can't think of how many times that the customers have told me, you know, it was doing it like five times a day last week, and that's not doing it at all. Um, and it brings us to difficult diagnostics. You know, in all the years I spent troubleshooting electrical and drivability problems, um, it really helped me remember these three things. First of all, you got to maintain a positive attitude. You know, it's going to lead you to success. Believe that you can and you're going to solve that problem. Um, you don't want to get frustrated. You want to be really patient, you know. And, you know, you really got to trust your skills and your diagnostic test equipment. Uh, now, developing a right, reliable troubleshooting strategy, you know, a typically a good uh, reliable troubleshooting strategy is based on asking questions such as, like, what do all these symptoms and DTCs have in common? Or what other components in the circuit share common powers and grounds? And these are the kind of questions that can really help reduce that big problem into only maybe one or two possibilities. And what happens when you get stuck and you feel like you're spinning your wheels? You know, my advice is to walk away from the problem. You know, don't waste any more time. Take a short break and ask for some advice or second opinion. You know, so 
and when we're talking about that, let's kind of explore why it's important to ask for advice. Uh, you know, think about this, guys. You know, in most shops, I usually charge about an hour for diagnostic time. If you spend 20 minutes looking at TSBs and recalls, you know, you go out and test drive the you know, one or two times trying to duplicate the problem, and then you follow a diagnostic flow chart, you may have used up a lot more than an hour, and you still don't have any answers. So how many times do you guys find yourself in that situation, right? I got to tell you, you know, before you reach the end of the hour, try bouncing some ideas off the other techs in the shop. Maybe one of them has seen that problem before. Or you can post a problem on an automotive forum such as Audata Community. You know, a major benefit of using, of using Community, guys, is that it's an exclusive forum for just all data techs. So it's like having 300,000 300, other all data techs from all over the country working right there next to you. And without a doubt, you know, one of those guys has seen that problem before that you're working on, and they're going to have an answer. So all you got to do is post the question, go work on another vehicle in no time. You know, you're going to have the answers you need. Now, since we're talking about experience-based answers getting on, that you're going to get on community, um, I'd like to take a few minutes to demonstrate how, how easy it is to search community for answers and also how to post a question to quickly get the most helpful response. So let me take a few seconds here to switch screens. We'll go to the demonstration. Over here now, you notice we've got all data community up, and there's a there's a home page. Now, say we have this guy's take an example. Say we have a misfire on a 2002 S10 Chevy Blazer. That never happens, right? Um, well, one of the fastest ways to find information on on in search the database is to go ahead and put the uh, put the the symptom up in the in the find box first. So we got misfire. And we'll hit enter. And if you notice, all of the returns, all the answers we have here are all the vehicles that have a misfire. You know, so they're, all, they're going to be in the title, they're going to be in the body of the text, they're going to be in, a, in the uh, keyword search. But what we're looking for is just for 2002 uh, Blazer. So let's go 2002. And then we're going to go to Chevy truck. And then instead of going just Blazer, I think we're going to go to just Engine, and we're going to go to a 4.3 VIN W because, as you see right here, even though uh, we're looking for Chevy Blazer issues, uh, GM has put that same engine in different platforms. So you're looking at a Chevy truck, the Express, the 1500, S10 Blazer, and S10 Pickup. So the same issues that affect one model can affect another model, too, because you're looking for problems that are basically uh, for the 4.3 motor. Now, if we can't find information, that you're looking for exactly. Something else you can do is you can go ahead and post a question. Like we were saying before, you can post your question and then go back to work on another vehicle, and then within 30 minutes to an hour, you're going to have some answers. So that's, in this case, though, when we're posting a question, we want to include a little bit more information. So we're going to go 2002. We're going to do Chevy truck. We're going to scroll down to S10. Let's do call a four-wheel drive Blazer. And then W, we got that already. And then we're also looking at the mileage. Now, the mileage is really important. Let's say this vehicle's got 175,000 miles on it. The reason why that's important is because, you know, the problems that plague a, a vehicle with 175, 176,000 miles can be a lot different than one that's got like 50 or 60,000 miles. So it's always important to include that. I know it's not a required field, but it really helps the techs and the other guy you know, out in the field to help you out when they, uh, they know how many miles are on there, too. It might help formulate their answers as well. So now we're going to formulate a question. What we're going to do is, first of all, we're just going to put um, the concern we have, right? It's a misfire. We're going to continue on with what we had before, misfire. And this time, let's include a couple of codes. So we've got P0304, and we got P0300. So there's our concern. And then down in the, um, the detailed description box, what we want to do is put in there what we've done so far, maybe what the customers told us. So let's put, uh, first of all, our MIL is on. So let's Put that in, am I on? And in this case, so far, the shop, we've replaced the spark plugs and the wires and the cap and the rotor. And we've also done a compression check real quick. We did a compression test, and it was okay. So we include everything that guys need to know. And we're going to also say, you know, now what? Um, what should we check next? I fat fingered that one, right? Question mark. Now, quickly, we just zoom down here to 
The symptoms is the system we're looking at is going to be computer controls because the drivability problem. And then we're going to include a couple of our symptoms, right, in the symptom box. We've got MILs on. And also we're looking at misfires. So that's fine, misfire here. Misfires. All right. Transmission, got an automatic. Let's put our codes in here real quick. V0, 304, and V0, 300. And then, of course, our test, we did a compression check, so we're going to have a little redundant, but we're going to make sure we fill in all the blanks. Yes, I And the results were passed, so we've got no problems with that. And now we've got to do is post the question. You click on the post button, and in no time, like I say, within 30 or 60 minutes, you can come back and take a look, and there'll be an answer for you. So let's go ahead. Right, you get a lot uh, better information back. You know, your answers will be more informative and more targeted because if you tell the other techs exactly what you've done so far, um, that better equips them to give you a, a better answer to get started. And, and also, don't be afraid to you get an answer, go back and try it. You know, when you look for, uh, <clears throat> you try to repair or test, and that works or does not work. Always, what we recommend is come back to community and post your results. And also, you know, if you need to have another question, you can comment on that answer that they've given you and, uh, and get more information and, and kind of work back and forth. Okay. So let's go to the next please. So you guys, have you noticed, um, you know, no matter how high tech vehicles have become, there's always going to be breakdowns, and although vehicles become more complex, the basic rules of diagnostics is never going to change. You know, you still have to ask the right questions. And when it comes time to ask your fellow techs for advice, go ahead and use all data community. You know, it's right there at your fingertips. It's included in your all data repair and collision subscriptions. You know, the information that's shared on community is professional. It's easy to find. It fills in all the blanks with experience-based advice and solution. That's the kind of stuff we're looking for. You know, and guys, if you're not already an all data repair or uh, collision subscriber, you know, call us today to start a risk-free trial. You know, and always be sure, go ahead and try all data community. Because you gotta remember, all you gotta do to help yourself out is, is ask. Okay, guys? And that concludes today's presentation titled The Power of Ask. Before we go, I just want to remind everybody that All Data Community is included in your repair or collision product subscription. There is nothing that you need to do. You can go into community at any time, search for answers to your tough to diagnose uh, vehicle problems, and go ahead and ask questions when you're stuck on an issue. Thank you.